Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will see how to create a Toast notification for your website using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So this is how it's gonna look. And if I refresh this page, we can see that there is a delay of one second and after one second, we have this Toast notification displayed over here. And if I refresh this page once more, it is being displayed once again. But if I click on this link or this close button, it goes back. So let's click on this close button. And we can see that the Toast notification is not being displayed. And now even if we refresh this page, it won't be displayed. So let's get started. Alright, so I have created a folder called Toast and I just opened it with VS Code. And I also have this folder called images over here and in that we have these two images which we're going to use in our project. So let's start by creating an HTML file. So let's create a new file over here and I'll just name it index.html and let's create one more file for the CSS. So I'll just name it style.css and we also need to have a JavaScript file. So let's create a new file and I'll just name it main.js and let's start with our index.html file. Now in VS Code, you have this shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And we'll also link our CSS file over here. So I'll just type link and here in the href, I'll just type style.css. And let's also link our JavaScript file over here. So I'll just type script, colon src and here I'll just type main.js. Right now, let's start by creating a container division to hold our toast. So let's create a division with a class of toast container. And in that we need to have two sections, one for the image and one for the text content. So let's create a division with a class of image. And in that we will have an IMG tag and in the source I'll just type images slash cover.png. And after that we'll create a division with a class of text content. And in the text content we will have an S3. And I'll just add some text over here. So here's our text and I will make this here a link. So I'll just create an anchor tag. And uh, in the href, you can just paste the link of whatever page you want. And I'll just close this anchor tag after the here. And then below that, we'll create a paragraph and we'll give it a class of author name. And uh, I'll just type live blogger over here. And then lastly, we need to have a close button. So I'll just create a division with the class of close. And here we'll just create an IMG tag. And in the source, I'll just type images slash close icon dot png. Right now let's open this in our browser. So I have this extension called live server installed in VS code. So you can just search for live server over here and install it. And once you do that, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And this is how our design looks right now. Now let's add some CSS and here we have already linked our CSS file over here. So let's go to the style.css file. And first of all, let's target the toast container. So I'll just type toast container. And the first thing we will do is we will position it to the bottom of the screen. So let's type position fixed and we'll set the bottom position to 20 pixels and uh, we will set the width to 90% of uh, the screen and we will also have a max width and we'll set the max width to 720 pixels. So the width won't extend 720 pixels. Right now we want all these elements to be one next to the other. So let's add a display of flex and we'll also align it to the center. And now let's add a background color. So let's type background and we'll set the background color to black and we'll set the color of the text to white. Right now let's change the font. So we'll be using a font called Montserrat. Now here I'm in fonts.google.com. So let's search for our font over here. So I'll just type Montserrat. And we need to have the regular style and also the bold style. So I'll just select this one from here, regular 400. And let's scroll down and let's also select the bold version. So I'll just select extra bold 800. And let's copy this link from here. And we'll just paste that inside the HTML. Here in the head section, I'll just paste the link. Right now, let's continue with our styling. So let's set the font family to Montserrat sans serif. And now we can see we have the Montserrat font over here. And we'll also add some padding. So let's type padding. And for top and bottom, we will have a padding of zero. And for left and right, we will have a padding of 16 pixels. And we'll also have rounded corners. So let's type border radius. And we'll just set it to 24 pixels. 
we'll also add some box shadow so let's type box shadow and we'll set the values to 0 pixels 8 pixels 20 pixels negative 4 pixels and RGBA 0 0 0 and 0 0.2 Alright, now let's bring it to the center. So let's go back and here we'll just type left of 50% and now we can see that it starts from the center. Now we have to move this element 50% of itself to the left. So for that we have to type transform translate x and we'll just set it to negative 50% of the element. And now we can see that our toast container is right in the center of the screen. Alright, now let's style the other elements. So let's go back and let's target the S3. So I'll just type toast container S3 and we'll set the font weight to 800 and we'll set the line height to 1.5 and we'll set the font size to 16 pixels. Right now let's add some padding to this text content. So if you go back to our HTML we can see we have this uh, division with the class of text content and in that we have the S3 and uh, this paragraph. So let's target that. So here I'll just type toast container text content and we'll set a padding of 0 for top and bottom and for left and right we will have a padding of 24 pixels and here on the right we will have some more padding because uh, we have this close button over here so if I just add a background color to this text content we can see that this is the width of the text content right now so we will add some more padding over here at the right so let's type padding right and we'll just set it to let's say 40 pixels all right that looks all right so let's remove this background color all right now let's target this paragraph so let's type toast container p dot author name and for this paragraph we will have a text color of aaa and we'll set the font size to 14 pixels and we'll also have a different color for this link so let's type toast container a and we'll set the color of the text to 5F64F3. Alright, now the last thing we need to style is this close button. So for the close button, we have this class called close. So let's target that. So here I'll just type toast container close. And we will set the position to absolute. So now this close button will be positioned relative to this toast container. And here we'll set the top position to 16 pixels and also the right position to 16 pixels. And here we can see we have the close button. We'll also have a cursor set to pointer when we hover over this. So let's type cursor pointer and everything looks all right. All right, that's it with the styling of our toast container. Now let's add some JavaScript and add some more functionality. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a delay for this toast notification to appear. So let's go back to our source code and here in our index.html file we have already linked our javascript file and we need to access this toast container from here. So let's go to our main.js file and I'll just create a constant and I'll just name it toast container and we'll just set it to document.query selector toast container. So this is how you reference elements from the html into javascript. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a class to this toast container. And for the class, we will have some specific styles. So let's go back to our style or CSS file. And uh, here in the toast container, I'll just set the bottom value to, let's say, negative 140 pixels by default. So now it will be off the screen. And we're going to add a class called active to the toast container. So let's type toast container dot active. And here we'll set the bottom value back to 40 pixels or I think it was 20 pixels. So now whenever we add the class active to the toast container, so here I'll just type active. And now we can see that our toast container is being displayed over here. And if you go back and if we just remove this active class from here, we don't have the toast container displayed over here. And here in the style.css, we'll also add a transition so that uh, we will have smooth animation. So I'll just type all to 1800 milliseconds and ease. Right now let's go to our javascript file and we will add a timer over here. So for that we need to type set timeout. And here we need to have the time. So we will just set it to 1000 which is 1 second because it's calculated in milliseconds. And here we can type the code that we want to run. So I just type toast container dot class list dot add and let's type active over here. So this will add the active class to the toast container after 
one second so now let's go back to our website and uh, let's refresh this page and here we can see after one second we have the toast container being displayed now if you add a different value over here for example if i just type 3000 which is three seconds then if you go back and if you just refresh this page we can see that the toast notification is displayed after three seconds so you can go ahead and customize this to whatever you want so i just set it back to 1000 milliseconds and now the last thing we need to do is when we click on the close button or on this link over here we want this toast notification to go back so we'll basically remove this active class from the toast container so let's go back to our html file and here we can see for the close button uh, we have this uh, class of close so let's reference that in our javascript so here i'll just type const close equals document dot query selector and toast container close and we'll also reference the link inside the toast container so i'll just type const link or i'll just type toast link equals document dot query selector and here we'll just type toast container a i'll just change this to close btn all right now let's add event listeners for the close button and also the toast link so let's type close btn dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and when someone clicks on this close button we'll run a function called stop displaying toast we haven't created this function yet but we'll create it in a moment and let's also add the event listener to the toast link so i'll just type toast link dot add event listener for the click and i'll just type stop displaying toast and let's create the function over here so i'll just type const stop displaying toast and uh, in this function we need to add a local storage to the browser now the data inside a local storage will stay intact even if we refresh the page so that is why we are adding a local storage so let's type local storage dot set item now for the local storage we need to have a key and a value so for the key we'll just type display toast and for the value i'll just type false and we also need to remove this active class from the toast container so let's type toast container dot class list dot remove active all right now let's go back to our website and let's right click over here and go to inspect and let's go to application and here we can see we have a section called local storage and in that we have our website and right now we don't have any key or value pairs now let's click on the close button over here and we can see that the toast goes back and here we can see we have a local storage called display toast and it is set to false now the last thing we will do is we will display this toast only if you don't have any display toast local storage so let's go back to our javascript and uh, we will add this set timeout inside an if condition so let's type if and here we need to check whether we have any values inside the local storage called display toast so let's type local storage dot get item and here i'll just type display toast now here we have to check whether this condition is false because if we have the local storage called display toast then we won't be executing this code so here we'll just add an exclamation so this will negate this whole condition and now if you don't have any local storage called display toast then uh, the toast container will be displayed or else it won't be displayed so let's go back and let's refresh this page and here we can see that the toast notification is not being displayed and if you go back to our local storage and if i just delete this from here and now if i reload this page we can see that the toast notification is being displayed over here so that's basically how you create a toast notification for your website using html css and javascript so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day